Pial everyone. Um, Namanti Momashisa Tlenika Akiata Wan Kanin Tiwala. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about who are you and where are you from? Okay. So, what we'll be learning today is we'll be expanding on our knowledge of uh, what we've been learning the last uh, the last couple of lessons. So we're going to be incorporating the possessive pronouns, the no, the mo, the e, etc. And we're going to be creating slightly bigger sentences with these, with um, by adding more prefixes to these words. And at the end of this, I'm going to have some simple phrases about uh, to talk about. Uh, like how do you say what is my name? Where do I, where do we where do I come from? Where was I born, etc. Okay, hopefully this is a, uh, still not going to be too difficult for you all um, because you've had a two weeks of not practicing. Hopefully you've been doing the homework. If you haven't been doing the homework, and you don't have to do the homework. However, um, I do recommend that you do it because <clears throat> when you do it, you're going to see a lot of more challenging questions, and you'll get and you'll actually be able to put everything that I teach you into practice. And then at the same time, you'll be able to get the answers and find out how to say more phrases. So I do highly recommend that you're doing this. Um, I always put the uh, link to the slides and to the, um, to the homework at the bottom of the description of the YouTube video. So make sure you, you check that out and you click on the links. Um, and for the people in the class, uh, who are currently now, you could just check this video later on YouTube and go and follow all the links. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to review uh, what we've been doing the uh, in the last lesson so that um, this lesson could go by a little bit more smoothly. So uh, here we have the first one, which is no. So if you remember, these pictures represent who who the object belongs to. And in this case, when I say no, it means it belongs to me, so it is my. So no would be my. Mo, yours, mo. E, his or hers, his or hers, e. To, ours. Inmo, y'alls. And inin, theirs. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you uh, this picture and I'm going to tell you about this and then I'm going to ask you some questions. Or I'm going to first tell you about this picture. So, inin se nana. Okay, so here I'm saying this is a mother. Notice that I'm using the word nana. So, nana is the Huasteca way of saying mother. However, other regions uh, may say it's slightly different. Um, Nana is usually not found like this by itself, as in uh, Nana, just Nana, because the truth is that Nahuatl requires that for family members, such as parents, uh, brothers, siblings, um, nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts, grandparents, they, that, that they need, you need to indicate who they belong to. Nahuatl requires you to say his mom, her mom, my mom, or whose mom it is. If you don't know whose mom it is, there is a prefix that you'll learn later, which is te, which indicates that it's somebody's mom. So in Nahuatl, there's always a way for you in, to indicate whose parent or whose family member it is. Here, I just wrote it as Nana as for illustration purposes. Okay, so in Nahuatl, the, the, the Nahuatl Huasteca way is to say Nana. However, in central varieties and other varieties, they say Nantli. But you'll never really see Nantli as the form that they're using because it's really never by itself like that. Um, but Nantli, you need to know Nantli because that is the root that um, you use in order to create more sentences or more phrases with Nantli, with mother. So if you remember from the past, when you possess something, you have to take away the absolutive. You have to take away this ending, this tli. So you're left with Nan. So if you want to say my mom, you would say Nonan. Okay, Nonan, or I guess you could also say Nonana. However, generally, um, now what you're going to add this 
uh, suffix sin at the end to make it more respectful, to make it more like somebody that you respect. So here I'm using the word nonansin, which is the, the most common way that you're gonna see the word for mother. So nonansin, my mother, nonansin. That's how now what constructs it. So here you have this box with um, the woman holding her, her chest indicating that this mother belongs to her. So it's my no Nancy, okay? If she was, um, okay, no Nancy means my mother as a phrase in and of itself. However, in Nahuatl, if you remember, the is is always implied in a noun. So by just saying the phrase no Nancy, you are also saying she is my mother as a complete phrase. It's a complete sentence in Nahuatl to say, no Nancy, and it translates to she is my mother. You could also translate it as my mother. If you wanted to make this sentence extra clear, you could add in front of this no Nancy, you could say ya no Nancy. That ya is that, uh, pro, um, that pronoun that means he or she. And in this case, adding ya no Nancy just emphasizes that you mean to say that she is my mother. But with, with or without the ya, that phrase still means she is my mother. Okay, if she were your mother, she would be monansin, monansin. Same thing, this is a whole sentence that means your mother or she is your mother, whole sentence. Okay, if it was his, his or her mother, it would be inansin, inansin. She is his or her mother, okay? Donansin. Donansin would be if it was our mother or to say she is our mother as a whole sentence. A lot of you probably may have seen the word donansin. Um, a lot of uh, people who do danza, they, they might use this to refer to Mother Earth because um, in, the, in the concept of, of um, now, now as you used to see the Mother Earth as our mother, so they might call her Tonansi. You may also have heard this for um, people referring, using this word to refer to the Virgen de Guadalupe, but it literally just means our mother, Tonansi. Okay, if she was Yah's mother, she would be In Monansi, In Monansi. She is Yah's mother. And if it was their mother, she would be inin nancy, inin nancy. She is their mother. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the same pictures and I'm gonna ask you, ah, kia ya, who is she? So I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself and then um, answer this question. Ah, kia ya. Mo nancy. Kuali, ya mo nancy. Ahkiaya Monansin Monansin, ya Monansin, quali Ya Monansin, Ahkiaya Ya Inansin Inansin, quali Inansin, mm -hmm. ya Inansin. So that, that Inansin in this case would refer to this, this child here because she is his mother, quali or her mother, I actually don't know. <laughs> um, Ahkia, uh, yeah, if she belongs to us. Tonansin. Tonansin. Quali, ya, tonansin. Quali. Ahkia, ya, if she belongs to all, you all, ustedes. In monansin. In monansin. Quali. And if she was their mother, she would be? In monansin. In monansin. Quali. In Nancy. Okay. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about another character and then I'm gonna ask you ah kia ya. Okay. So inin se tata. Okay, so you can see the, the alternative to nana would be tata. I guess the quote unquote opposite. I don't, know, I don't really like to say opposite, but yeah. So father would be tata in Guasteca Nahuatl. Okay, but just like tata, the, the root of tata is really not. Tata, it's really tatli in central varieties. So tatli is the root, 
And when you possess that, when you say my father, your father, or somebody's father, you're going to remove the TLI and it's going to become, in this case, nota for my father. But because we want to be respectful, just in the same case as my mother, we would add the scene to be respectful, and now it's notatsin. Notatsin. Okay? Notatsin. Okay? So, aquí allá. Yeah, notatsin. 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 Ajá. Ya notatsin. Ya notatsin. Aquí allá. Ya motatsi. Ya motatsi. Ya 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 Ahkia ya. Ya imotatsin. Ya imotatsin. Wan ahkia ya. Ya inintatsin. Sin. Inintatsin. Okay. So here are the six forms of how you could say um, each of the forms of you are my mother or I am your mother. Or I'm sorry, my mom, your mom, etc. And so I all. All that you're seeing here is that the prefix is changing, no, mo, e, etc. This is basically a summary of what we just did, but with mother. And notice that I translated it as my mom, but I also translated it as parentheses, she is my mom, because it means both things. It means my mom, and it also means she is my mom, because in what is is always implied with a noun. And because mother is a noun, it's always implied as is this thing. Okay? Wali? Okay, so we now know how to say monansin. We know that it means your mother, okay? But in Nahuatl, you, you, you may just want to say she is your mother. However, there are other ways or there are more things that you could do to this word to make, to extend its meaning. So if you just have the word your mother, what if you wanted to say, I am your mother? If you wanted to say, I am your mother, you're simply gonna put those prefixes that we've been learning from the past that indicate who is doing the action. And so here we're gonna put ni in front of this. If I wanna say, I am your mother, I'm gonna put ni in front of this whole phrase. And now it becomes ni monansin, ni monansin. And that means I am your mother, okay? I am your mother, ni monansin, okay? If I say nonansin, I'm saying my mother, right? Nonansin. But if I want to say you are my mother, I would put the prefix for you in here and I would say ti nonansin. You are my mother. Ti nonansin. This ti changes that meaning. Okay? And also remember, if I just have nonansin by itself, it means my mother, but it also means she is my mother. So that third person, um, that third person, when you're saying somebody is something, you don't put a prefix in here. You, you leave it as blank, and now it means he or she is my mother. Okay? Okay, so if, if I just say e nansin, I'm saying his or her mother. Here I only put his for brevity, but it could also mean her mother. But if I want to say I am his or her mother, I would put the ni in front of it, and then I would have ni inansin. So maybe you're thinking, oh my God, there's two eyes here. Should I write both eyes? So in what we do write both eyes here. So even though, um, so that first eye comes from the ni, and the second eye comes from the e. And while when you pronounce this, you're gonna elongate the eye. So you're gonna say ni inansin. Ninansin. So you're going to say it a little bit longer. Because if you just say Ninansin, uh, it means I am mother. I am a mother. And so in order to distinguish it, when you're pronouncing it, there's two eyes that will indicate that you're saying I am his mother. So it would be Ninansin. Ninansin. Like that. So I am his mother. 
So don't freak out if you see two eyes. These are not typos. These are on purpose, and you'll see them all over the homework section. So they, they are on purpose. Okay. So if we have Iman seen again, you can, you can say, I am his mother, but you could also say, you are his mother. And if you said you are his mother, you would put the T in front of it and it would become T Nansin. You are his mother. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to ask you, ah, kia, ya. So first I'm going to tell you that Inin, Inin Sandy, Juan Inin Daniel. Okay. Sandy, Juan Daniel. Okay, these are names that I've given these characters. These are not the real names. Uh, I use a uh, stock royalty-free uh, stock website. So I actually am just naming them. These are not their actual names. <laughs> but I need to name them in order for the lesson to go better. Okay, so Inin, Sara. Okay, Sara, Inansin. Sara Inansin Sandy. Okay. Sara Inansin Sandy. So this E is saying that the um, the mother belongs to Sandy. So this is saying like Sa Sara, the mother of Sandy. And of course, because now what doesn't have the is, this whole phrase translates as Sara is. Um, the mother of Sandy, literally, but really in, in English, we would probably just say that Sara is Sandy's mother, but literally it's Sara, the mother of Sandy. Okay, and the quality. Okay, so, Ahkiyaya. With respect to Daniel, Ahkiyaya. Sara Sara y Nancy Daniel. Quali. Quali. Okay, now if there's more than one of uh, more than one child here, so we have Sandy and we have Daniel. So Ahkia Sara with respect to Sandy and Daniel. Sara Inansin, Sandy, Daniel. Ajá, quali. So I heard one person say Inansin, and I heard another person say Inin Nancy. So here, because they are more than one person, when you're talking about their parents, so you would use the word Inin Nancy. Sara Inin Nancy, Sandy, Juan, Daniel. Where this Inin is, is, it doesn't mean they, but it means their, their mother, of Sandy Juan Daniel, okay? Could you say Sara y Nancy Sandy Juan Daniel? Actually, you actually could say it that way. Um, sometimes I have read it that way. However, the more grammatically correct way to say it is in Nancy, but sometimes I, I do read the Nahuatl Bible and they sometimes kind of don't follow those rules. And so Nahuatl is very flexible in some cases, but I'm teaching you the grammatically correct way uh, now and then later you can see all the nuances but just know that Nahuatl is a very flexible language compared to Spanish and English you can generally there are a lot of rules but then some of them the rules are broken and then in some cases there's more than one like some things mean more than one thing and so some things are ambiguous in Nahuatl and so it doesn't mean that oh somebody you know they messed up or whatever it's just there's a lot of different kinds of Nahuatl and there's a lot of flexibility in this language. Okay, so ahkiyaya. Ahkiyaya. Inin Sandy. Kena, Inin Sandy. So if you say Inin Sandy, you're saying this is Sandy, which is a perfectly acceptable answer. Um, I'm gonna answer this one as Ya Sandy. The nuance being here that if I say ya Sandy, I'm saying she is Sandy. Whereas if I say inin Sandy, I'm saying this is Sandy. That's the only difference. But those answers are both acceptable. You could have also said just Sandy because San, um, in Nahuatl, the is would still be um, already understood as uh, implied. So if you just say Sandy, it means is Sandy. Okay, but I here wrote, I, I wrote here ya Sandy, she is Sandy. Okay, aquí allá, 
Wait, I have a question. You have a question? Okay. Yeah. Why yeah, I'm going to go back to one she, slide. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so why do you say, Ya does not say he or she does it, it just says uh, that's, or, you know, this is Sandy. Mm -hmm. Okay, the word inin means this, right? So if you say right. inin Sandy, you're saying this is Sandy. I'm trying to determine how you okay. figure it out it's a she. Oh, you, there, there is no way for you to figure out it's a she. From the what your language, we, so we, that's what I'm wondering. There isn't and a Sandy way. Sandy is a, a neutral, uh, it's both a male and a female. Okay. So remember I gave them, I, I, is I that thought it change? was a little boy. Oh, <laughs> you sorry. did? I thought, yeah. okay. Well, we, we differ. I actually named her Sandy. And I thought okay. it was a, a girl. And truth be told, and now what this phrase, yeah, Sandy doesn't say she is. Right. It just says this person, he or she is. So we don't actually okay. know this person's gender. I assumed that, that she was a, a girl. I actually don't know for sure. But remember, I gave her the name. Right. So really, I, I decided that sure in the past. Yeah, uh -huh. I was just making sure that you weren't saying that yeah meant no. she also because... See, the, and the, it, does, it does mean she, but it also means he. It's it's vague. Yeah. It's just that right. in English, when I translate it, I have to say she because English requires me to say it. But in Nahuatl, I could just say Yasandi, and we still wouldn't know whether she was a, a girl or a boy. We probably have to ask. And to me, I thought she was a girl. Okay. Ahkia, ya. Ya, yeah, Daniel. Ya, yeah, Daniel. And here, I guess I also assumed this was a boy. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, yeah, Daniel. Quali. Aquí allá. Yes, yeah, Sandy. Yes, yeah, Sandy. No. Yes, yeah, Sara. <laughs> y toca, y toca Sara. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, Sara. Uh -huh. Okay, so I just wanted you to tell me their names because now I'm going to ask you questions about these people. Okay. So, um, oh, sorry. Aquí allá <laughs> gave you the answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you figured it Sara out. Sara Inansin Sandy. Quali. Sara Inansin Sandy. Quali. Okay. Aquí allá. Aquí allá. Sara Inansin Sara. Yes. Sara. Daniel. Quali. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In case you, so Sara, Inanz, and Daniel, I'm giving you all in complete phrases, all the answers, like complete sentences. However, there are also other possible alternatives of what you could say. For example, you could just say Sara, Inanz. If you just said Sara, Inanz, you would be saying Sara is his mother. So it's still a complete sentence, Sara, Inanz. I just here added the name to make it extra clear. You could have also said Ya, Inanz, she is his mother. And um, Inansin, you could have just said Inansin, and it would still translate as she is his mother. The only reason I'm using she in this case is because it's implied in this phrase because of the context. We know she must be the mother because I told you she was the mother. And because she's a she, I translate it as she. But now what, like, does really doesn't have a gender. So ya Inansin could have, I guess it couldn't really translate it as he is the mother but the ya is still neutral, the ya is still he or she. But we know from context, because we're talking about a mother, it should be a she, okay? And that's the case in Nahuatl for a lot of things. You'll see later, even with verbs, this is a common thing where you don't actually know if it's a woman or a man. You only know through context. <clears throat> okay, ahkia ya, with respect to both children, ahkia ya. Sara inansin. Sandy Juan Daniel. Sara Ininansin, Sandy Juan Daniel. Okay, some people say E1. Um, you can say one or E1. Both of them are acceptable. E1 is the more central way to say it. I will accept E1 or one. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, one is just a shorter version that uh, Huasteca speakers use, but E1 is still acceptable. And I kind of like E1 because it's more regular. But anyways, <laughs> Sara Ininansin Sandy Juan Daniel. So now, ooh, okay, 
Sara y Nancy y Diego. Kena, Ashkana. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so Ashkana is the answer. But could you elaborate? Could you say this as a more complete sentence? Sara, Ashinan, Sin, Diego. Quali, quali. Sara, Ash, Inan, Sin, Diego. Okay. So here, I, uh, if you remember from our previous lessons, we learned that you can say you can say no in three ways in Nahuatl. You could say Ashkana, you could say Amo, or you could say Ash in front of the um, word. Here I wrote it as Sara, Amo, Inan, Sin, Diego but ash is perfectly acceptable. Throughout this whole presentation, you're gonna see all three different forms um, because I want to show you that you can use any of those three. And honestly, all three are used. So pretty much you should know all three, okay? I like ash the most because it's the shortest, but honestly, you can use all three, okay? Uh, Sara Monansin. Amo Sara Monansin. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I would say Sara Amo Monansin, okay? So Sara Ash Monansin, Sara is not your mother. Quali, quali. Sara Ash Monansin. Now, if, this is just saying like she's not your mother, but if somebody was asking you this, you would probably not say Ash Monansin, you would probably say Ash Nonansin because you're answering the question about yourself, right? Because you would be saying she's not my mother. But here we're going to keep it consistent because I asked you about your mother, but just keep that in mind that the perspective would change if I was asking you directly, hey, Sara Monansin, and you'd be like, Sara Ash Monansin, where'd you get your information from? Okay. <laughs> okay, Sara uh, Tonansin, Sara Tonansin. Sara Amo Tonansin. Vale. Sara Amotonansin or Sara Ashkanatonansin. Quali. Sara Ininansin. Sara Amo Ininansin. Quali. Quali. Sara Ash Ininansin. So just remember that Ash is stuck directly to the word. It's as a prefix, whereas Amo and Ashkana are separate words. Okay. And this translates that Sarah is not their mother. Um, if we take away the word Sarah, it still is a complete sentence. Now it's Ash Ininansin, and that would just translate as she is not their mother. Um, and that's perfectly okay. Okay. Uh, ah. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to ask you more. You kind of have to put yourself in a different perspective. So now when I put this Sara and I put the colon, I'm saying that Sara is saying this. She is stating this. Sara is saying ni monansin and she's talking to Sandy. So she's, she's asking Sandy this question, ni monansin. So how would Sandy respond to this question, ni monansin? So first, what is she asking Sara? Um, Sandy, what is she asking her? Am I your mother? <laughs> Am I your mother? And so what would Sandy say? Kena. 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 Uh -huh. uh -huh. Let's try to make it a whole sentence, but yes. Kena. No, no, no. Kena, no, Nancy. I didn't hear any. Uh, uh, mm. I didn't yeah, hear anybody. No, 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 no. Ah, there you go. So Edgar, I, I, the other people, they kind of got muddled in, so I'm not 100% sure if I got everybody cur heard the right answer. But she would say, Kena, ti no nansi, right? So if she's speaking directly to her, she's going to tell her, you, ti, ti no nansi, you are my mother. Kena, ti no nansi. Because from her perspective, she's talking to her mom, so she's saying, you, ti, ti no nansi. Could you put ta in front of here? Yes, you could say kena, ta tino nansi. That ta, remember, I told you in the past, these na, ta, ya, to juantin, imo juantin, ini juantin, those are all the uh, pronouns themselves. Those pronouns are not necessary, but you could put them in there. 
putting them in there adds extra emphasis. So like if there was really a lot of doubt in this mother and she was like, are you sure I'm your mother? And she's like, que na ta, Tino Nancy. That ta would add that extra emphasis, but it, that's not really necessary. She, would be, she could just say, na, que na, Tino Nancy. Okay, Quali. Now Sara asks, Daniel, she asks him, Nimo Nancy, how, how should Daniel respond? Kena Tino Nancy. Wally. Kena Tino Nancy. Yes, you're my mother. Okay, Kuali. Now Sara says to me or to you, she just generally asks, Ni Nancy Daniel? Ni Nancy Daniel? And if you were to answer this question, she asks you this question, Ni Nancy Daniel, you would say, Kena ti inansin. Quali. Kena ti inansin Daniel. Yes, you're Daniel's mother. Quali. And now if she asks you, ni inansin Diego, what would you say? Um, ash ti no nansin. Okay, if you say ash ti no nansin, you're saying you are not my mother which from my perspective, it works, but not from your perspective. <clears throat> All right. Um, Amo ti inansin. Quali. Amo. Ash ti inansin. And the Diego is not necessary. You could just say ash ti inansin, and it's still understood as you are not his mother. But the Diego just clarify who you're talking about, but it's not necessary either. Amo ashti inansin Diego, or ashti inansin, or ashti inansin Diego, or ta ashti inansin Diego. Many ways to say this. Okay, quali. Sara uh, says to these kids, she's talking directly to them, she says, ni monansin. She's talking to them, Imi Juantin. What would Imi Juantin respond? Kema Timo Nansin. So you're saying Timo Nansin? So you're saying you are your mother? Kena Tito Nansin. Kuali. Kena Tito Nansin. So the To is our mother. So, Kena Tito Nansin. So, it would not be Timo Nansin because Timo Nansin would be, I am, you know, you are your mother, which doesn't really make sense. <laughs> All right. So, Achiyok Tlaneshtili. More examples. Achiyok Tlaneshtili. Uh, okay. So, uh, here I gave you uh, many, many examples. Um, in this slide and the slide that follows on how to construct all these types of sentences, since there are six pronoun prefixes and there are six possessives, you can mix those in almost any um, in almost any order. And so there are maybe 36. Now there are some that are logically inconsistent, so those don't exist, but I would say max there would be 36. There's definitely less than 36 possibilities of how you could combine this. But all you really need to know is first, who is doing the action? So when you think about who is doing the action, you would you say, is it nata, ya, et cetera? That you need to put the prefix in there. So if I am, I am your friend, I am doing the action, quote unquote, there's no really action to be done, but I'm the one that's the agent, I'm doing the action. So I would put me first. And then who does it belong to? If it belongs to you, in this case, like your friend, you would put mo and then wampo. So he, this is the word for friend. Wampotli is the word. Wampotli is friend. Wampo is the Huasteca way to say friend. Other varieties of Nahuatl, such as in Guerrero Nahuatl, they say yolikni. Yolikni means brother of the heart or sibling, sibling of the heart. Actually, there's no gender, right? So it's sibling of the heart. So um just know that this is the Huasteca way to say it, but other places might say it slightly different. I've only heard Wampo or Yolikni. I personally like Yolikni, but I'm giving you the Huasteca version because 
Meh, but I feel ambivalent about this word. Anyways, it exists and I give it to you in this way. So Nimo Wampo, you wanna say you are my friend. Uh, you would say you because you're the one doing the action, I guess. You're the one who's, who's the friend. And my friend, you, you belong to me. So I'm gonna say no, Tino Wampo. So Tino Wampo, you are my friend. And since the word Wampotli, it ends in TLI, you have to remove the TLI and it becomes Wampo, okay? Ni y Wampo, I am her friend. Tito Wampo, you are our friend. Ni y mo Wampo, I am y'all's friend. Ya y ni Wampo, he is their friend. This ya is, um, is optional. I only put it there just because I felt like it, but you don't need it. Remember, if you don't put anything here, it would be inin wampo. And that phrase inin wampo, it means their friend. And because there is no prefix in front of here, we know it, we're talking about he or she. So it translates as he or she is their friend. Love those people. So be aware of that. I hope that that's clear. I hope you've done enough homework to understand that. Okay, if you remember from previous classes, when you possess something that is singular, like if you say my friend and it's only one friend, then you just remove the ending, right? But if you have more than one friend, like you're saying my friends, your friends, their friends, multiple friends, if you remember, uh, you learned that when you possess something that is multiple, you are going to add the one. So if you remember when you say my dog, you would say no chichi. But if you want to say my dogs, you would say no chichi one. Okay, so it turns out that there are some weird exceptions in Nahuatl. Um, and Wampo happens to be one of those weird exceptions. For some reason in Huasteca Nahuatl, um, so if you were to say my friends, you would expect this to be no Wampo one, just no Wampo one. But for some reason in Huasteca Nahuatl, they like to add this yo to this word specifically. So instead of saying no wampo one, for some reason they say no wampo yo one, my friends. Okay, so just be aware that this one is an exception, but most words you're just gonna add a one to them. The other more common exception is the word masewali, which means people or person. So if you say my my person, I guess you would say no masewal, but if you were to say my people, you would say no wampo yo, no masewal po yo one, no masewal po yo one, like that. You're adding the, the yo for some ex weird reason. Other varieties might just say no mas igual one, my people. But for some reason, what's the canal what does no mas igual por yo one. Okay, so I, weird tangent, but I just needed to explain that because you're probably asking like, why does it say one por yo one? But this just happens to be a weird exception of this word and the other word mas iguali. I think there's another exception, but I can't remember it. Okay, so timo one por yo one, we are your friends, okay? So here, the person doing the action or the person um, who is the friend is we. So we're going to put the prefix ti. And we are your friend, so it's mo. And wampo is friend. And because we are more than one person, we're going to put poyo one, wampo yo one, OK? You may be wondering, again, from like previous lessons, how do I know that ti mo wampo yo one means we are your friends and I and it doesn't mean you are your friends because you have to think about what this the how many friends there are here. So if you see the word one po yo one, you automatically know that there's more than one friend. So when you see one po yo one, that automatically means that this the must mean we because we are plural and one po yo one is also plural. That's how you kind of understand through context who you're talking about. Because you could argue that this T means you, but here it doesn't mean you because it means we because one po yo one is plural. Okay? Ino one po yo one. Y'all, my friends. Y'all are my friends. Inin one po yo one. They are their friends. Okay? So here this inin is referring to their. Okay? And how do I know that I'm talking about they in this case? because it ends in poyo one. So this is plural friends. So you must be talking about more than one friend. So this must be talking about they. They are their friends. Hopefully this is clear. And I gave you a lot of examples so that when you're doing the homework, you can figure all of these 
things out because I made the homework a little bit like kind of challenging so that you could figure this out on your own. So I give you a lot of examples. And uh, people tend to get these things confused. Just be aware when there's one friend, it's one way. And when there's more than one friend, it's a different way. Be very uh, aware of that, okay? So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me. Don't worry, it's not too crazy or confusing and it's very basic, but hopefully you can figure this out. This is for me to give you this information so that well, you can talk about yourself. Um, if you wanna say where you're from or what your name is, etc. It's, it's only five phrases, okay? So tlenika na translates as about me. Tlenika means like about, regarding. You could have also just said ikana. Ikana is still means about me. This tlen is a little bit extra. I kind of don't like the tlen there. Okay. <laughs> so ni Diego. I'm pretty sure from now, by now you know what ni Diego means. If you don't know it, you need to watch like five episodes. <laughs> By now, ni should be very clear. So ni, Diego, I'm not even going to translate it. I'm pretty sure you know what that means. But I could also say no toca, Diego. Okay, the difference here is that no toca means no, my, and toca, name. So here, no toca, Diego translates as my name is Diego. Remember, the is is implied. So literally here, I'm just saying my name, Diego. But in Nahuatl, it's understood as my name is Diego, no toca, Diego. Vale? Okay, Ninemi Los Angeles al Tepet. Okay, we haven't yet done verbs, but this is your first, I guess, verb that you're seeing in class. So Nemi means to live in a location. We're gonna learn verbs next week, so be ready. But as you can see, they pretty much act very similar to how we've been um, using nouns, but now you're seeing that this ni is also used in front of verbs. So ni nemi means I live. Los Angeles, don't need to explain that, and Altepet city. Okay, ni nemi Los Angeles Altepet, I live in Los Angeles city. Quali? Ni wala mexico, I come from Mexico. So wala means to come from or to come. Ni wala mexico. Notice I said mexico and not mexico. For some reason, in these 500 years, the word mexico, at least in Huasteca, has been shortened into mexico. So they'll say mexico. Mexico is not a common uh, see, but maybe in central Nahuatl, they still say mexico now, uh, mexico. But um, for now, we're going to use mexico because that's how the Huasteca speakers actually say it. Okay. And then, ni tlacatqui, Michoacán, uh, tlacatqui. It means was born. This verb is tlakati. Tlakati means to be born. Tlakatki is the past tense of that verb. So ni tlakatki, I was born in Michoacan. Ni tlakatki Michoacan. Okay, so that's a little bit about me. Here are all the translations. And these are the questions that somebody could possibly ask you. So if you somebody says, ah, kiyata, who are you? You're gonna respond, ni Diego if you also happen to be a Diego like me. Aquí ya está, ni Diego. Tlen motoka, what, tlen? Motoka, your name. What, your name, literally, but it translates as what is your name. Tlen motoka, what is your name? No toca Diego. Canin tinemi, where, canin tinemi, do you live? Canin tinemi, where do you live? Ni nemi Los Angeles. Canin tiwala. Where do you come from? Ni wala mexico and kanin titlakatki. Where were you born? I was born in Michoacan. Okay, so tlen y kata. Let's talk a little bit, a little bit about you. You can, if you want to, you can unmute yourself and I can ask you these questions. Be aware that this is recorded, so you may or may not want to volunteer this information. It's really up to you. I just really wanted you to like practice saying, talking about yourself if you would like. So I'm gonna ask you these questions. If you want to participate, if you do, unmute yourself now. If you don't, if nobody unmutes themselves, then this is the information in case you were wondering for the future. So you can just say something very simple when you're communicating with the native speaker. Okay. Does anyone want to participate? If so, unmute yourself. Okay. I'll try it. Wally. Let's go. Okay. So, Akiyata. Okay. Akiyata. Uh, ni Heidi. Wally. Um, okay, tlen motoka. No toca 
Heidi. Kuali. Kanin tinemi? Nini nemi. That's uh, where are you from? Uh, where do you live? Where do I live? Kanin tinemi. Okay. Okay. So Ninemi, Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, kuali, kuali. Kanin tiwala. Um, so, Wala is past tense. So, where are you from? Kenna. Uh -huh. Okay. Kenna. So, Nia eh, Wala, El Paso, Texas. Oh, Kuali. Uh -huh. Okay. Ikani Titlakatki. Mm, I forgot what that one meant. Uh -huh. So, oh, think of the word Tlakat. Tlakat means man. Nah. So Tlacati okay. literally means to become, well, it's a, it doesn't mean to literally become a man, but actually Tlacat like used become. to mean a person in okay. classical Nahuatl. So Tlacati literally means to become a person. And this is the past tense. So when did you become a person? It's literally when Nahuatl is saying, but it means when were you born? When I was born? Okay. Or sorry, where? Where mm -hmm. I was born. Okay. So neat. Nitlaki El Paso, Texas? Oh, Kuali. Nitlakatki. Nitlakati. Okay. Nitlakatki. So this cat needs to, yeah, this cat needs to be the loudest sound. Because if right. um if you go to uh, the second listen, to last syllable. Yeah, in episode two, I tell you the second the last syllable needs to be the loudest. So that'd be mm -hmm. the cat here. Okay. Nitlakatki. Nitlakati. Ki. Mm. Quali, <laughs> quali, okay. La sokamati, Heidi. Thank you. Quali ni mitz ishmati. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Quali. All right. It looks like uh, Yahida also wants to participate. I'm so, gonna try. <laughs> no problem. You saw how it works. You could do this. Aquí <laughs> está. Um, ni ni toca. No, okay. I'm sorry. So, um, so here you insert your name. Okay. Oh, yes. Ni Yahaira. Kuali. Ti Yahaira. Kuali. Uh huh. Tlen motoka. Um, no, no toca Yahaira. Kuali. Kanin tinemi. Um, eh, ninemi Miami at Lepet. Oh, quali tinemi Miami al tepet. Quali. Ah, uh, kanin tiwala. Um, so. ni wala Nicaragua. Oh, quali tiwala ti Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Kanin titlakatki. Um, oh, yeah, ni, um, like, ni, like, Tlacati, Chinantega, mm -hmm. Nicaragua. Oh, Kuali. Kuali ni mitzishmati yajira. Nice to meet you. Okay, here. Right. Or Tlazokamati, Miak, Imohuantin. Okay, so here I have the summary of what you've learned so far, at least what you learned in this class. I want to point out that on the left side, you have the six pronoun uh, possessive prefixes. So possessive meaning something that you own. Okay. No mo ito in mo inin, you know, in the translations. Whereas on the right, I have who is doing the action, who is the agent. Okay. So you, we've learned ni, ti, ti, and in, right? The reason I have them here side by side is for you to compare and contrast them. Like I said, uh, the reason I do this is because I've taught a lot of students and I know where they mess up. And here is one of the places where they generally mess up. So on the right is who is doing the action? Like, who are you talking about? So if I'm talking about you, um, myself, I'm gonna start with me, right? But if I'm talking about something that I own, that is mine, I'm gonna be using no. If I talk about you, I'm gonna use ti, like you are doing this, you are this person, I'm gonna say ti, but I'm, I'm talking about your cat, then I'm gonna be using mo for your cat. I would say mo miston, your cat, etc. If I talk about he or she, I'm not going to put a prefix in front of that word. If I say she is a teacher, 
I'm just going to say, she is a teacher or he is a teacher. I'm not going to put a, anything in front of that. But if I want to say his or her teacher, I'm going to say, and you, that's kind of an irregular construction that you haven't learned yet, but you will learn later. But I would say, his or her teacher. So notice those, those are different, what I'm putting in front. If I say we, like we are, we are flowers, I would say tishochime, we are flowers. But if I want to say our flowers, I would say toshochi. Okay, so make sure that you keep those separate and don't get them confused. Okay, next week we're going to be talking about verbs. You already kind of saw a preview just now. And the word in Nahuatl for verbs is tlachiwalistli. Okay, um, here I have the, diff the new words that you learned today. Nansin or nana for mother, tatsin or tata for father. I want to point out that Nahuatl does the same thing that Spanish does when you're talking about your parents. So if, if you speak Spanish, and maybe if you don't speak Spanish, this might be a little bit weird for you to understand, but I'm going to clarify right now. So first, I'm going to tell you, if you do speak Spanish, generally when you say my father, you say mi padre, my father. But if you want to say my parents, you're going to say mis padres, like plural, the plural form of father. Okay, so now what does the same thing? If you want to say my, my father, you would say no, no tatsin, right? No tatsin. But if you're talking about my parents, you're going to pluralize father and you're going to say no tatawan, no tatawan. My, literally, you're saying my dad's or my father's. But in Nahuatl and in Spanish, my father's quote unquote translates to my parents. So Nahuatl does the same thing that Spanish does. So be aware. Okay. The reason I bring that up is I have that in the in the homework section of the course. And so you might get confused with that. Be like, how, how do you say my parents? But literally say my father's. Okay. Um, Tokait is the way to say name. Uh, but notice when I'm saying my name, your name, I remove this ITL and it becomes Motoka, Motoka, Itoka, his or her name, Totoka, our name, Inmotoka, y'all's name, Inintoka, their name. Okay? Nemi, to live, Wala, to come, and Tlakati, to be born. Okay? La Sokamati Miak, if you want to donate, here's the information. I have Venmo, Patreon, PayPal, Zelle, etc. And now I'm going to leave it open to Tlatlani Listi. I'm going to check to see if there are any questions in the chat and I will answer them. And then if there aren't any, then I will also hear what people have to say now. Okay. So there aren't any questions in the chat. So if you have questions now, I'm I open to these questions. Um, you mentioned um, uh, Nahuatl Bible, and actually, I was trying to find one. They're not easy to find. Where? Oh, really? I mean, other uh, outside <laughs> of an electronic in, one. Oh, you, you <laughs> want you want a physical one? Oh, yeah. Because I, I was like, literally, you type in Nahuatl and Bible, <laughs> you know, and like all kinds, <laughs> and I could tell you apps and everything. Um, okay. Uh, physical Bibles, honestly, I don't have any links or anything of that nature for you. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I don't know. That is a great question. Uh, maybe you'd probably have to go to Mexico to find a physical copy. Um, I, do you have like an iPad or like a, an iPhone or, cause there's an app I'm, called, um, Bible.is and they have the Bible in basically every language. Um, mm. almost every language. They have like, I think like 3000 languages. And the mm -hmm. reason I like that app is because aside from just having the text, which is pretty awesome and helpful, you also have a lot of them come with the audio. So you can be reading it while you hear how an actual native speaker would say it. So I find that very awesome. When I started learning Nahuatl, I started learning, um, I started just memorizing stuff, but then I also used the Bible because see the Bible has phrases listed, like each chapter listed um, with the sentence with a number, right? So you can identify the exact same sentence in like an English or a Spanish Bible. So even though they don't do an exact translation, you can generally understand what it's about. 
And in that way, you can infer the meaning of a lot of the words. So that's how I improved a lot of my vocabulary was just by reading and then looking up what does that word mean? And if I did, if I can't find it on the dictionary, I can kind of understand what it means based on everything else that I know in that sentence. And then I would also generally verify it. So that to me, that was one of the best tools. And then now that I um, know enough, when I do listen to the audio that accompanies it, I can actually understand it. I know exactly what they're saying and then I can hear it and read it at the same time. And so it, that is very helpful as a learner. So I highly recommend it, whether or not you believe the, what's in there or not. Um, I personally don't, but um, I do see it as a very valuable learning tool. Okay, thank you. Okay, Quali. So I'll give, give you the name, it's bible.is if you, if you Google that in the Apple store, they have it and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they must, they probably do have an Android version. I would imagine that they do. But even if you just go on the internet and just type it now at Bible, you will find PDFs all over the place. I found like six, seven different now at versions of it <laughs> for the different regions of now what. So. Um, when are you gonna go over um, how to use the uh personal lexicon ah two two probably two or three um no i could do it next week but the thing is next week i i sh i there's a there's one thing that you haven't learned which is the difference between transitive and intransitive verbs and that mm -hmm. is a very key difference that you need to know in order to understand how to use the dictionary correctly and so next week we're going to learn intransitive verbs but maybe a week from that like probably the next week after that, I'm going to teach you how to use transitive verbs. And once you know how to use transitive verbs, and I would say the lesson after that, I'll teach you how to use the dictionary, or maybe it'll be the same lesson. So it's probably in two or three lectures from now. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah, you need to know that difference in order to understand how to use the dictionary now what because whether a verb is transitive or intransitive changes changes the meaning and which word you're going to use from the dictionary. So it's very important for you to know the difference. So I would say two or three lectures from now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Fiera says, I missed this class. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm glad I'm back too. I've been having a lot of life changes. Um, I'm still not moved into my new place. I'm actually going to move in probably uh, I, uh, next week. Tomorrow, I'm gonna go look at the, at the place. So what's been going on is that they're fixing it up. And um, so when I first went there, it was halfway fixed. And yesterday, my landlord told me that it's completely fixed now. And so tomorrow, I'm gonna go visit and I'm gonna go see it. And I'm probably gonna move in probably this weekend or within four or five days. So by pretty much by Wednesday next week, I'm pretty sure I'll be in probably by Friday. And um, I figured out a solution because see, I use, um, currently I'm using my Wi-Fi from the place where I'm staying as their internet, but where I'm gonna be staying, the internet isn't so good. So I'm going to be using my phone as my personal hotspot. And which is, it's really good actually there in where I'm going to live because I, I used to live there. So my personal hotspot would work really well. But then my problem was that I was using my phone as my hotspot and also my phone as my webcam. <laughs> so I figured out a solution. So I'm pretty sure by next Wednesday, everything will 100% be figured out. So I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll be consistent now. Okay. But if for some reason I disappear and nothing happens, don't freak out. It doesn't mean, does not mean classes canceled. What happens is sometimes my access to the internet is not amazing, but it will, it should fix itself. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, well, uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. You work in housing. So, okay. Well, thank you. If for some reason the house like blows up and I don't have a house or something. It's not going to be a house. It's like a like a studio in a in back of a house. It's really awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, I have my own little like kitchenette and my own little um, bathroom. It's private. It's my own interest. It's my own room. It's it's like a studio, a mini studio in the back of a house. It's in a house where I used to live. So I know the landlord. I used to, I lived there for four years. So I'm really happy with her. She's happy with me, and um. So it should be a really good situation. I'm so excited. Ah. Uh. 
Thank you, thank you. All right. Any other questions about now what? Um, I would like your feedback on how you think the class is going. Do you think that it's really easy to understand? Is it hard? Um, how is it going for you? Am I confusing you? Are you doing the homework? How's it going? Oh, thank you. Okay. I, I love the class. Cool. Thank you. Um, I think it'll help. Uh, I know a little bit about transitive. Mm -hmm. Transitive. So um, oh, it'll you? help too. Cool. cool. It, a lot of people who speak uh, English may not. Mm, I, I remember I studied that in high school, but I barely remembered it. I only really remembered it better <laughs> once I learned to know what than when I learned it in school because I remember I do remember transitive and intransitive but not it did not mean anything in English in Spanish it kind of does matter but if you're just a native speaker you may not even know what that even means but in now what you need to know the distinction it's absolutely necessary otherwise <laughs> the way that you say it is changes completely so now what forces you to indicate with who what is the object even if there is no object you have to indicate it in now what so you have to know the difference so hopefully by at the end of this you'll be transitive and transitive experts <laughs> uh, let me speak it uh, the uh -huh. chanteke complements the uh, the lecture as well as the uh, powerpoints that you that you uh, present so let's look at the oh so you, you've been doing it then Yes. Cool. Have you been finding it to be hard? Because um, I, I like to add a little bit of extraness to it to make it a little bit more hard. Do you find it to be hard? T towards the end, I enjoy the pattern so you could get a great feel for uh, the uh, the subject prefixes. And then at the end, I, I see the twist that you do. And <laughs> right. then every time I check it, I'm like, oh, that's where it got me. That's where it got me. <laughs> <laughs> I okay my secret I don't know if it's a secret anymore is that I make the questions progressively harder so that like you build on what you know and you keep building and then the last question usually is the hardest question so yeah that's the pattern that's because okay, I want to keep pushing you pushing you pushing you and also if you have questions about the homework you should ask them here because I make them challenging and some things may not be clear I think that the classes is, is very clear. Um, it is, it's not easy, easy in the sense that, yeah, you do present um, a challenge, but it's, it's clear. It's just, you know, you have to think and process that. I mean, that's how you should be, you know, learning and reinforcing. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's great. Cool. I also like to put into the lectures previous lessons, but like kind of sprinkled in there so that I'm reinforcing previous learning. So like, for example, today I'm talking about no and the and all those things, right? But you learned those already, but I also throw in the ashkana, the amo in there so that you'd be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> but my goal is for you to be slowly, gradually building new um, like foundations and then gradually being able to learn, create sentences and then gradually, well, the point of the class is for you to be able to interact and actually respond because eventually that's how you're going to actually be able to speak. Um, I never took like a uh, school uh, lec language classes in high school. I did take Spanish classes, but I was already a native speaker, but I know that my friends who were taking Spanish classes, they generally just learn grammar, which is fine. I teach you grammar too. But the fact that it's more interactive makes you actually engage and probably remember it better. See, I had a lot of friends who learned it and then after four years of Spanish, they can't, they can't even create a sentence, not, not even on the spot. And if you're gonna learn a language, you should be able to create sentences on the spot. When I learned this, I learned um, a lot of grammar and I could create the sentences, but actually speaking was really hard for me because I didn't have anybody to practice with. So your, your advantage here is that you have me I'm pretty much there at fluency now. And so you can practice with me and I understand what you're saying very quickly. So hopefully if you keep coming to class and interacting, it will increase your understandability and, and your memory of it. And also do the homework, it really does help. And by the way, this took me seven years to, to get where I am. So it's not like it's 100% easy, a percent easy. I'm a fast learner. 
but you know, I had a lot of breaks in between and it took me about seven years um, to get it. So just don't give up. And now I'm gonna learn more languages. So you can do this. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. So Fiera says, I appreciate you allowing us to ask questions and that you're very kind when we make mistakes. <laughs> Trust me, it's taken me a lot, a lot to get there. Because when I started being a teacher, I was a mess. I was like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> but I learned with time to be patient and to realize that everybody learns at a different level. And that just because they're wrong doesn't mean they're going to be wrong next time and that it's okay to make mistakes because if you don't make mistakes, how, how the heck are you going to learn? So yes, make mistakes. You should feel comfortable to make a mistake in this class because I know you're learning and I know you're going to make mistakes. So yes, it's okay if you make them. Don't worry. I'm not going to judge you. I fought many inside internal demons <laughs> to get to where I am to be able to teach you and not get frustrated. When I first started, I had horrible anxiety because I learned really fast. It's really hard for me to like slow it down and be like, okay, they're not me. <laughs> Everybody learns at a different pace. So now I'm way more patient than I used to be. So I'm glad to hear that you can see that I'm patient because I really worked hard on that. <clears throat> Thank you because it makes me feel comfortable uh -huh, to say things wrong. You should feel comfortable. And um, also, if you get it wrong the first time when you're watching it, watch it later on the YouTube. You have access to all of the classes on my channel and you can watch them over and over and over again until you finally get it. It's okay to do it multiple times. Eventually, you will get it. Learning a language is not easy, but you will get it, okay? That's uh, Okamatimiak. Any other questions? No. Okay. Ashkana. Ashkana, okay. What does that mean? Ashkana. <laughs> I right. hear it a lot. <laughs> Ashkana, no. So so go to, I think, oh, yeah, yeah. lecture number four. Plus, remember in this class, we did all three different versions of, of mm -hmm. no. So it's amo, mm -hmm. it's Ashkana, and ash. All three of those versions can mean no. I, we were learning it yesterday, and I was trying to figure out what to say. Mm -hmm. So Ashkana, Amo, or Ash, same thing. Okay, and definitely watch uh, the, I think like episode four or episode three, I don't remember which episode, I talk about ne ne uh, the no, the negation, you should rewatch that. Okay, bueno, if nobody else has more questions, Timoitase Chikweyiyok. Piali. Piali. Timoitase Kweyiyokwali. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 Bye.